Hey everyone, welcome back to the layout. I have a little bit of a different type of video today. I've been doing a lot of updates over the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, today though, I'm doing an unboxing of some pretty cool stuff I recently received from Lombard Hobbies. It's been quite a while since I've uh, purchased new equipment. Uh, went kind of crazy while I was selling my end scale equipment, but now that that's pretty much gone, I've really scaled back and have focused on just funding the construction of the layout, but I did break down and get a, a couple of items for the layout. Uh, I want to try and get the uh, double stack intermodal trains going, so I got some containers. These are from Aurora Miniatures. Uh, these are a little bit more expensive than uh, the regular Containers are about $13, $14 a piece. Uh, but these are really highly detailed, uh, really cool containers. I really like them a lot. They got some extra printing that most containers don't have. They have these little shoes that you can put between the containers that look very realistic. Excellent end of the uh, trailer or end of the container detail. They are, each of those parts are separately molded and then what's really kind of cool I didn't realize this last time I got them uh, but the doors open up that's the only container I know that has doors that open so I think uh, in the Evanston yard I'm going to have a couple of containers on the ground uh, with their doors open and maybe some unloading going on I'm not sure if it'll be the Evanston yard uh, maybe at the UTLX facility, unloading some parts, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, got some APL uh, containers, three of them. And then I also got some CAI. Uh, both of these are very common on the Union, on the Union Pacific. So uh, definitely want to pick up some of them. And we'll see them uh, in some well cars here before too long. I uh, got uh, three packs of three of the CAI and just one of the APL. And I'm going to need just a few more uh, double stack well cars and some more containers, but I pretty much have everything I need. Uh, one other thing I got is uh, some KD couplers. These are the uh, whisker ones, uh, uh, whisker, the metal couplers, medium shank with the metal whiskers. <laughs> Got some fruit uh, candy there. And you may recognize that box with the upside on it. This is the Athern box. And I broke down and got a heritage unit. People have been asking me uh, many, many times if I'm ever going to get a heritage unit. And kind of said, no, I don't think I'm going to. But I kind of broke down and picked one up. Uh, Trying to decide between the MKT and the Western Pacific. And, uh, and looking at them, I really uh, settled on the MKT, and it looks really awesome. Here's some of the things that come with it. The parts diagram, in case you lose something. Instructions here. In case you need to figure out what the, each of the functions are. Uh, this is the warranty sheet. I'm sure everybody reads those uh, word for word. Uh, the one thing that really made me break down and buy it, um, I was thinking about this for a long time, but they were like two hundred and ninety-seven ninety-eight or something like that. Almost, almost $300. And Lombard Hobbies came out with them at 264 so $33 less than everybody else. Uh, so I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and pick one up at $264. This is the uh, typical packaging for the Athern. Also, scale trains is very similar to this. Uh, it used to be that they would come with uh, truck immobilizers, but they've kind of got away from that. Here's a protective uh, plastic coating or a plastic sheet that they include in it. 
I always have to be careful handling this because there's a lot of very small details. Um, this is a very, very nicely detailed, um, these, these little foam sheets. I found that I really can't get that out unless I have something <laughs> to stick in there. There we go. Then you can carefully grab it out. Take a look at the other side. I like the Katie ones um, because uh, we used to live in Texas and was a uh, Mopac fan and also a MKT, Missouri, Kansas, Texas. Um, I like this one. I lo really love the, the color. The, the red looks cool, but then the dark uh, maroon color uh, looks really cool. Here you see some of the detail, very, very fine detail. Nice truck detail, all the piping, the fuel uh, detail, the filler, sight glass, and everything. And then tons and tons of detail. But when we lived in, lived in Texas, I kind of uh, liked the Mopac as well as the uh, MKT. I actually um, also got... Uh, very familiar with the Southern Pacific and you may ask why am I doing Union Pacific well because all those roads are part of the Union Pacific now here's a roof detail nice uh, fans I like the black paint on there here are the end detail the MU cables and coupler lovers and all that kind of stuff um, I like this uh, more than the Mopac one. They did have the Mopac one, but I didn't like the blue. I like this red much, much better. Uh, here it is on the layout and uh, one little section here that I have scenic a little bit. And go ahead and take a listen to it. It's kind of hard to uh, know exactly how it sounds uh, on video. Uh, but uh, I could tell that they had uh, upgraded uh, upgraded speakers on these with the twin sugar cube speakers. Definitely a little bit more richer sound than the stock speakers that the uh, previous Atherin Genesis have had. This is a 2.0, uh, which basically just means the better speaker. There's a truck light. I don't know if you can see it. I'll, I think I have it turned on here in a little bit. Um, but so you have the truck light, you have the speaker. Um, that's about it. There may be a little bit extra detail. But they're trying to keep up with scale trains, which has uh, all those things. This is right out of the package. Uh, I have it set at um, 3. At the address three. After I'm done here, I'll put it on the programming track and get things set. I have the dynamic brakes since we are going downhill right here at this particular part of the layout. Now it's going back to regular. You can hear the engines revving up. One really cool thing I love about this uh, locomotive is the, the Lone Star at the very front. The front looks really cool with a dark, dark maroon and the Lone Star there. Uh, definitely a lot cooler looking locomotive to me than the Mopac Blue or the Western Pacific with the feather. That's pretty nice too, but I think of the three, this is the one I like the best. So I have a heritage unit on the layout. The bell was a little bit uh, quiet, so I'll have to do a little bit of adjusting on that. Now, one, one other thing that the 2.0 has is lighted number boards. Again, keeping up with scale trains. It was just a little, slightly bit jerky, um, but with some running in, it smoothed out tremendously. Uh, it came with no momentum on which kind of threw me a little bit and of course the directional lighting uh, so here I think I'll uh, figure it out where the uh, 
functions are for the all the different lights. Uh, ditch lights you saw go on and off. Uh, they're very bright, as is the headlights. There you see the truck light just came on and then off. It's F24 and F25 for the truck lighting and then also the number board lights. Now Skill Trains also has walkway lights in the front and on the sides. Catherine yeah, hasn't quite picked up on that yet. There you see the number boards come on. The number boards were a little bit bright right out of the box. I kind of dimmed those down a little bit. So they're so bright you can, can't read the numbers that well and it's as bright as the headlight. So when I put it on the programming track I did adjust that a little bit. But very, very nice looking locomotive. And it was great that I got a good deal, 30 bucks less than what I was looking at at other places. So thank you, Lombard Hobbies. Ordered it uh, on one day, and it was here the next day. Uh, one thing that is kind of a little bit of a concern is a light bleed through the top of the locomotive. I'll have to put some tape or something under there somehow. Uh, the cab top comes off very easily if you want to see the detail and put an engineer in there uh, but anyway nice looking locomotive glad I picked one up I think I'll have it uh, running with my double stack train right, let's take a look at the uh, weight of it and it's uh, one point one pound three ounces I'll switch it over to uh, grams here 542 grams 542 grams uh, compare that to previous SD 70 ACEs 472 so it's a good 50 grams heavier than the previous SD 70 ACEs both from Athern but uh, comparison to scale trains this is a a Jeevo 648 so over a hundred grams more same size locomotive a lot heavier here's a tier 4 715 uh, so that's almost 200 grams more and then the heaviest of all the inner mountain tier 4 737 or 31 so that's a full 100, 200 grams heavier. Uh, so Atherin's got a little bit of catching up to do uh, in that regard. Um, but it is an excellent engine, and I like the Tsunami decoder better than the ESU. Here we'll see it uh, take a stack train through. Uh, this is a double slide control point. Here you get a good look at it may have noticed I did tone down the number boards a little bit as it crosses over at the control point and runs past uh, uh, another train waiting to go in the other direction. Uh, the top K-Line containers here are also from Aurora Miniatures. These 40-foot ones are Walther's uh, containers. And then we have um, some more K-Line. Uh, the K-Line, the top are Aurora Miniatures with the op doors that open. The bottom ones are Walther's. The Walther's ones are 10 bucks. Most of them are $10, $11 for containers. Um, the Aurora Miniatures are 13 50 or so. Here's the brand new ones I got in an Athern Maxi 3. Look very, very nice. Great addition. I now have two double stack trains. Um, so I'm trying to go more unit trains here. Uh, this one has about uh, 35 wells.
We'll see the whole train go by. There's a couple of coddle maxi Fords, I think they are, and then some Rapido separate wells, well cars. And then we have the uh, distributive power, and I know SD70s are not used for distributed power, but UP did fit some of them with the ability of to do so. So I'm still using them. When I get some more locomotives, I'll probably relegate them to locals and switching. Here we'll see it go through some scenery. So great additions to the layout. I'm having so much fun running trains on the layout, uh, but I'm still getting stuff done. Uh, thanks for watching this video uh, today. Uh, in a couple days, on Sunday, there'll be my regular update. Make sure you stay tuned for that. We do have mainline trains running on the second level, so you definitely want to check that out uh, this coming Sunday. Thanks so much for watching. Everybody have a great day. Uh, take care.